part of the bigger conversation, and, and I'm sorry I'm going to use a word that the irresponsibility of our states are managed. You know, it's a serious problem. Um, See, so we need an education of the political class in Nigeria. Um, years ago, the states, the second tier of government, were really the levels at which the incentives for wealth creation took place in this country. States were competing with who would have agreed settlements or regions, and, you know, who would have who would create more incentives to attract investments, who would do this and that. Streets have retreated into fuck account business. We just get from Abuja. We look at the motorcades of governors today. There is scandal with incomes dropping the way they are dropping. Governors are still behaving like they were some lords of manners. And again, I will repeat the word irresponsibly uh, 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 governing. And there isn't civil society work responding to governance at the state level in many areas and so we just have this open season it's not a surprise that many of them can't pay salaries somebody gave an example of my home state delta and uh, uh, how and I, i've not checked these numbers how the salary wage bill of delta is more than the entire budget of a do <laughs> that it used to be both of them were one one state how do we function like that? What, do we have states designed for to pay wages? And political office holders just think that their role is to dispense largesse to anybody that they fancy. No, they have a duty. The, the loss of taxation as the essence of governing happened primarily at that level. The states stop paying attention. Now there's a lot of talk about internally generated revenue. Where do you generate re revenue from if you don't create the incentives to produce? And you know, we, we had to talk about the states. I'm happy Chamberlain brought this up and uh, you sh 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 put in more light, uh, focus on the states. Uh, it is only when they cry foul or they cry that they are in dire need or in dire want or in distress that we get to know that, look, we should talk about the states more often. How is it that sometimes when we even talk about the budget of states, uh, for weeks now we've been looking at the budget of the federal government, 2016 budget, but we ignore that of the state, what exactly is happening in states, so many other firms have come with, I mean, back to the 80s, uh, you just reminded us of how buoyant it was to the extent that people wanted to show off their wealth, uh, the champagne scenario. Mm. Can't the state be more, you know, Creative in ways that they can really leapfrog uh, such states and have a, uh, a domino effect that the federal will then feel it. Surely they can. I have been an advocate for a long time, not only of of states uh, doing things to create nodes of development, but acting in concert, groups of states working in concert to create new centers. I, I, I don't see why we cannot have, uh, you know, people use this now, five, six new Dubais in Nigeria with a cluster of states saying this is zone of development. Around here we'll have an industrial park and a natural evolution of a new city will take place. Everybody's coming to Lagos. It is not right. You don't grow a country like that. Do you think they've been hampered? Because we know that even recently, by who? Uh, the by the structure of this uh, of you know the federation, we say this is not a federation. This is a unitary system. They're Do you think that we need to go lazy. back to regionalism? Well, I like regions, but that's not even the, the big issue here. Yeah, I like regions. I, I like clusters of states functioning as if they were regions, uh, uh, but I think that. There is just not enough motivation on the parts of, let's say not say motivation, there isn't enough understanding of the possibilities on the parts of many people who seek public office at the subnational level. And there isn't uh, enough of the passion to create the kind of wealth that the Sedowners and the Oparas and the Awolo was created in the regions back in those days. Um, 
I get maybe it's part of this whole Godfather syndrome. You just find some fellow that you think uh, is loyal enough. Okay, let's put him there as governor or and something. Hurting us. Yeah, hurting us very badly. And I thought there was an attempt uh, going back uh, to that. I recall uh, the regions, for instance, uh, states in the regions, for instance, south south. Uh, the governors that they were meeting. Uh, I recall then it was even Dr. Udwaha who uh, had one in Delta State. No, 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 that, no, no, no I'm trying to. Let, and then in the southwest, that, that was Delta Beyond Oil. And in the southwest, they also came together thinking to yeah, see how they can uh, block. Uh, I think they also had the Ehigbeti. So we thought that all of that could have opened up uh, the, the regions, even though we had uh, states. I was trying to intervene because. The governors of the South South got together, and I was named by them to be chair of the economic summit group of the South South. You were in Calabar, weren't you, at Tinapa? Mm -hmm. I think you were. In, yeah, yeah. I think I remember seeing you in Calabar. Yes, Tinapa. Yeah, Tinapa yeah, yeah. was a different one. I think we had to do something with the um, movies and art. Oh, is that that one? Yeah. Is that that one I yeah. saw you at? No, but the South South had this. Great summit. The South South Summit. Summit. It was in Delta State. I saw that. No, no, that's the second one that came years after. Okay. Yes. When things had even started going south. The first one went beautifully. Um, uh, president Jaradua was in office then. He was actually represented by the then vice president. No, Jonathan. Good luck, Jonathan. Yeah. And, and, and the vice president expressed amazement at the fact that the thing was pulled off in the way it was said, look, he used to be governor in this region. They couldn't get it together. But their successors were clever enough to allow the private sector to lead it. And that's why this thing worked out. And, you know, before he read the president's speech, he made uh, that preamble. Now, it was going very well. We then suggested to create a commission, similar to the European Commission, which we call the Braced Commission, taking from the names of the states. Uh, Bielsa. Bielsa, Rivers, um, Akwai Bom, Cross, Cross River, Edo Delta, Braced Commission. And that these states will act collectively to drive economic development. All this stuff I talk about, uh, factor endowments and value chains, we went through all of that. What happened? Politics. They did have a braced commission. I do remember that. Yes, the braced commission. Was a chair. Uh, Ambassador Keshi was yes, actually appointed. He was. Chief executive of that commission. Mm -hmm. But by then, the governors had started quarreling uh, uh, because of petty politics. And they couldn't see the possibilities of that. If that thing had been driven the way that we planned it and stuff that we were putting in place, that pool would become essentially the Ryan Valley of Africa. And we were even imagining that at some point the South South would come together with the South East to create a zone of development that would essentially drive this country. But again, simple inability to see beyond how much dollars oil brought you today, and you but felt I, like I, it. I mean, when you travel, you you you, you go beyond one city. You're not talking about. In fact, no one talks about D.C. You have so many of them, so many cities uh, uh, that uh, are of interest to a lot of people. So, but coming back home, you, you, you just reminded us that we shouldn't be talking about Lagos, Abuja, all the time. So we can drive this development in every nook and cranny of our city, uh, of our nation. Uh, uh, v quickly here, what can the people do? If you look at the government trying to create an enabling environment for the people, but we have individuals, entrepreneurs, young Nigerians who really want to see how they can bounce the economy uh, back to where it was before, glory days. Can they on their own do it? You know, uh, a friend of mine uh, uh, who I was saying to, a little frustrated with things a couple of months ago, I said to him, Mohammed, why don't we pretend we don't have government in this country? Can't we build our country without government? And in truth, really, uh, I don't know, most, most times government does more damage than good. Uh, uh, but, and he said to me, a very sharp entrepreneur, he said to me, this country is too difficult to do anything without government. And I, I don't, I respect that point, but I am not very happy with it. I think that 
we need to have government that wants to make itself obsolete let me let me put it that way it's not the best way you see we need small effective government amongst need, the people no, yeah oh. we need you know, a strong effective government but oh. a government that lets go and provides incentives for people to build their nation unfortunately many people who go into public office are minded by power minded by without it their own personal relevance is not there so they are tenacious in holding on to but i think that power should let go and incentivize the people who are very entrepreneurial people that's one of the things going for us as, as nigerians we're very entrepreneurial if government were not the users who will make more progress and if we could create the environment for people to just work together um look at some of the biggest challenges that face us are infrastructure challenges that prevent us from uh, uh, reaching our potential the way government functions in nigeria ah there isn't enough money there the budget you don't need one couple of government budget to do most of the infrastructure Nigeria needs to get going. You need a, a a set of regulations that makes it possible that you and I can get together and say we'll do a 12 lane highway from here to Asaba and we'll toll it. People can take the government road if they want, but those incentives are not there. There is there's a scarcity of capital around here. There's plenty of capital out there. Look interest rates are going to zero around the world but here's in double digits if if we create the right atmosphere those monies will come in here and do those things but we've not learned to trust those institutions yet that's a fine place where we'll have to ask oh, always a pleasure having you around professor Pazitomi, a political economist thank you for coming on this morning glad i could we will be back in a minute don't go away